Welcome to Church Planting and Renewal Conversations. I'm Chris Vogel, Director of Next Gen Pastors, and I serve MA as the Ecosystems Development Director. As a kid, the last week of August was a time of impending dread. The pallor of what loomed on the Wednesday after Labor Day filled the conversations with our with all the friends in the neighborhood. It was time to go back to school. Now, I didn't mind school during the school year. However, however, after the three months of carefree play in the neighborhood, a trip to the Jersey Shore, later bedtimes, returning to the routine of starting the day so early, of suffering in a classroom with a stifling September heat and no air conditioning, and sitting still all day was hard. Since my educational course meant I spent more than 25 years following that same seasonal pattern, learning to love late August took some time. Well, the next 25 years as a pastor likewise had its challenges each September with re-entry after a vacation and renewing a new season at church. Those feelings are exacerbated returning from my two sabbaticals I took while serving the church. And so what does it look like to come out of a season of of rest and re-engage ministry? How do you capture and apply the lessons learned? What, what is needed to make changes, to manage expectations and set a course for the next season of ministry? Well, joining us today is Vincent Torriello, m and coaching specialist, as we have a conversation about re-entry re from sabbatical or summer break. Well, good, good, uh, good day, Vincent, how are you? I'm well, thank you, Chris. I love I love that uh, intro because I, I can totally relate to that. I felt the same way every summer, <laughs> and not only as a child, but also as a as a pastor. Yeah, but yeah, I mean, I think the the first thing that that I would say on this whole subject is reengaging in ministry after a season of rest, whether it's sabbatical or vacation, is hard. It just is hard. Um, whether or not that rest. Uh, did its job or not, you know, whether or not you feel ready or not, um, you may feel cloudy, you may feel clear about, you know, what's ahead or the changes that you want to make or need to make. Um, you might not be sure about how do I maintain this work-life balance that I finally feel like I got my hands around while I was away. Or you might be real confused or clear, hey, I need to change my role. I need to change my job description. I need to make that new initiative or set that new direction or vision. And, and, and there it is. Now it's right in front of you. <laughs> yeah. So it's, it's, it's challenging. It's hard uh, right off the bat. And maybe this be a good time to post that poll. Uh, and the poll is simply a question. What is your top concern as you return and re-engage in ministry? And you have uh, five options there. If you would select one, we'll give you, uh, I guess, 30 seconds to a minute to fill that in. Then we'll close the poll and read out the results. You know, those are, I don't know if on the recorded version that we'll see it. So those, those questions, again, are losing the benefit of rest, losing perspective and insights gained. So you have a sabbatical and are you able to carry through what you learned? Really, managing the expectations as, as you re-enter, setting the course for a new season of ministry. And again, we always have great expectations for what we'll do in the next phase. And then all of a sudden, reality hits. Uh, and then fifth, losing the sense of call to my present work. And that's, I think, sometimes often a fear a lot of times of uh, what unfortunately has sometimes been called not a sabbatical, but a sabbatical. You know, yeah. come out of a sabbatical and, okay, I'm done. Goodbye. Uh, and so always wanting to be, be careful of that. All right. I think that's good. No, well, I'll, uh, you had a good response there. And I'll share the results. You can see there. So what, what, what do you think? Yeah. So number four, uh, setting the course for ministry uh, came in at 33%. So that was the highest. And then this, a close second was losing perspective and insights gained at 25%. Uh, not too far behind that was losing the sense of call to my present work. Mm -hmm. That was at 21%. And then losing the benefit of rest was 17. 
And then just 4% managing expectations. Yeah. I think that is, uh, that, that, that sounds uh, pretty consistent. My experience mm -hmm. setting the course for a new season of ministry was, was definitely. It, it, it sounds like the, 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 the thinking is a sabbatical. Yeah. It's a time to reset, but it still is looking forward. Yeah, that's a, that's a good point. Yeah. All right. Well, I, you know, again, as as always with um, these conversations, we like to be as much of a conversation as we can. And uh, uh, if, if you're attending, there's the Q&A box. And um, I've already seen a question come in. But also... Um, uh, for our, our panelists here, we'll, we'll introduce our, our guests in, in a minute, moment, but please use the chat box or the Q&A box. We really want this. Um, it's a four-way conversation, but we want you to be able to participate as, as well. Well, we want to learn from the experience of others. Um, and so we've invited some guests to, uh, to join us. Uh, Joe Brown is Associate Pastor for Discipleship at West End Presbyterian Church in Richmond, Virginia. Been on staff there since July of 2006 and uh, had a sabbatical, what'd you say, Easter through July? Was that it? Uh, that's, that's right. Yeah, the day after Easter, I started and I returned August 1. Pretty good. And then John Talley, he's the pastor of Christ Church in Milwaukee since 2014, planted and fertilized that church and is, is there and uh, has had a summer vacation, but has applied for the Lily. Um, Grant, and we'll talk about that a little bit perhaps later. I'll have a link for that, flying it, and, and uh, uh, hopeful to hear the results this week or next week. So I wasn't sure if in scheduling this one, if, if he would get it like, you know, an hour before we go on and we find him either right. doing a dance on the, on the table or weeping in the corner, uh, whichever <laughs> it might be. Yeah, yeah it's good You're to be welcome. here. So brothers, welcome. And uh, if you wouldn't mind just starting with a brief introduction um, and, uh, and then tell us either, you know, what was your greatest challenge and or the greatest benefit from uh, your break, whether, you know, vacation or sabbatical? Yeah, I mean, I can go first. Uh, the, again, Joe Brown in Richmond, Virginia, associate pastor here and um, uh, one of the greatest benefits of my sabbatical, this sounds so redundant, but, uh, it was such a gift of rest. Uh, I mean, as everyone watching this knows, the past few years have been horrendous. Um, and it's just been killer relationally. If you've been doing ministry, I didn't, I didn't sign up for this ministry business to manage masks. I'm not making any statement about that. I'm just saying that's that that was something that just that's what we had to do. And it was just horrendous. We had people leave our church over for various reasons for all of that crazy stuff. And it was so hard. It was just so hard. And so I can simply say the greatest benefit was it was truly a, a time of rest. Um, and I was telling we had our session meeting just two nights ago. Um, the first session meeting back, and I was able to express to them that it was one of the greatest gifts I've ever received. I mean, the the time and the money to be able to go uh, for rest was such a blessing, such a blessing. So. Great. Thanks, Joe. Thanks for sharing that. Yeah, I think for myself, um, last summer, I was able to take a number of weeks away. I, I wouldn't say I, I refer to it lovingly with my congregation as a mini sabbatical. And so uh, we were able to take some time away in five weeks or so and get away and rest. And it was enough to not feel fully, fully rested as a, a full fledged sabbatical might give you, but enough to also disengage from the ministry for a while, um, be able to appreciate and enjoy um, my family more and time with them and, um, and stepping away physically, mentally, emotionally from kind of as Joe said, the grind of what COVID has done over the last, you know, two plus years in our lives and cities and ministries and churches. But 
one of the things that I uh, saw out of that time away, which um, as Chris mentioned, I'm hoping to have a more full on sabbatical next summer, 23, but, and, and we see, I'm, you know, we'll, I'll be interested to see if it happens then as well, but being able to model for our congregation um, what real rest can look like. Uh, I remember sending out an email leading up to my time away where I essentially said, you know, you're not going to be able to reach me unless it's a, a full on emergency. And several people kind of uh, responding either directly to me or indirectly to another elder or something in a very loving way going, wow, that, that really, I didn't know that John was going to be that disengaged from, uh, from everything. And, and I think that the result of that, a benefit of that was them kind of realizing, oh, this rest is good for all of us, right? God models that well. And I hadn't intended for that to come across necessarily in that way. But, but I think that was one of the benefits of, of me communicating that to our congregation going out. So uh, one, one of many, but I think that was one that comes to mind. Yeah, that, John, that I appreciate I, I, I would just say, I, I appreciate you saying that, John. I, I think one thing that I was, I was surprised about was um, there were people in my congregation that were offended that I was not, that I, 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 I wasn't going to talk to them for, for months. And, mm-hmm. and I appreciate what you said. It, it really is teaching them what is sabbatical, what is rest. And um, I had to, I was able to have some good conversations. I think they were good um, over what this means, why we need, why pastors specifically need time off. So anyway, I think that's great. Yeah. It, it's a hard concept uh, in our culture. I think in a lot of ways um, we understand vacation mm-hmm. sabbatical is different. And they'll think of academic sabbaticals, which is different, a time to produce and work in a specific way. Um, and a lot of people say, well, I don't get, you know, two months, three months paid vacation. And uh, I was recently listening um, earlier in the month um, on the Good Faith podcast, David French and Curtis Chang did a segment called Rest and Remembrance. And they pointed out how our culture puts a premium on hyperactivity. I mean, what is the common question with vacation? Did you have fun? And it really means, what did you do? Uh, Mm -hmm. But returning to vacation, we often say, well, I I need a vacation now that I had a vacation, which we really mean I need a Sabbath after my vacation. And so Mm -hmm. differentiating between those, I think, is is important. Uh, What one person posed it this way about when it comes to sabbatical, can you be present to God and receive restoration from God in the midst of incompleteness and unresolved tension. Can you be present to God and receive restoration from God in the midst of incompleteness and unresolved tension? I think that's part of what Sabbath is. It's just trusting I can walk away and God is still in charge. Mm-hmm. And for pastors, that's a step of that's a leap of faith into a dark, abysmal fear that we have, I think, in a lot of ways. Yeah, I'm glad you said that, Chris. I, I remember from my, well, I've been on many vacations, obviously, but on my sabbatical, I was pretty sh- shocked that it took me probably two weeks to kind of feel like it was okay to fully enter into it. You know, mm-hmm. like I kept waking up thinking, I don't have to write a sermon. I don't have to do, I don't have to show up for the meetings. It just took me a while to give myself permission Mm-hmm. So that was definitely the challenge was to just really receive it as the gift that it was. I think the benefit was it gave me, pers- I gained perspective. I could not have gained in the midst of the, the labor. Um, so like I, like I wasn't doing anything terrible in my family life, but you know, nothing technical or, or strange, but what I, I, as I step back, I realized, you know what, I'm, I'm a pretty dutiful guy. I'm present physically but I wasn't as present as I thought I was in, in other ways. And I would not, I would not have seen that. And I think the same was true in terms of my relationship with the Lord that I was able to hear differently, um, you know, and I was able to be open in a way and, and he was gracious to meet me in the way that, that I needed to be really renewed and, and refreshed deeply Mm-hmm. So those are the two. Th- I, I thought, hey, full disclosure, let's be vulnerable too. So I figured th- those are the benefits and challenges I remember mm-hmm. gaining from my time. Mm-hmm. At, at the risk of talking, yeah, Joe, what, what? yeah I, I would say I, I appreciate what you said, Vincent. It, the sabbatical 
serving as counselor or or sabbatical opening up the ability for the Holy Spirit to truly counsel me. There were there were a couple relationships of people in my church that I would have just operated in the same relationship, the same way. Um, but it was a couple, uh, like a couple weeks, a month, six weeks in that I, it was like this light bulb went off and I was like, wait a second, I'm, I'm treating that person one way. They're treating me one way. And this is not the relationship that I think a pastor should have with this person or, I mean, nothing, nothing bad in any way. It's just like the way we interact that it was really helpful for me to be able to come back and say, and, and, and just reframe in my own mind, how I'm, how I am pastoring and how I'm even just being a friend with someone. Uh, I would not have gotten that if I didn't go on sabbatical. It was, it was truly, a, yeah, a gift for the Holy Spirit to counsel me in that way. Mm-hmm. Yeah, John, as you're thinking, you, know, you say you had a mini one, but thinking ahead, Laura, for next, next year, having a full sabbatical, what, what are your, what are you looking out for, uh, you know, from that and the benefits there? Hmm. Yeah, that's a great question. I, I think that, as has already been said numerous times, it's probably the main objective is just finding rest and, and finding a, a place to kind of uh, be restored, be rejuvenated in, in life and in ministry. So that's one of the one of the benefits. Um, you know, as we're talking here, listening to an, an article popped into my mind that in some ways ties in, I don't know if you guys saw it or not, from Walter Hinniger on By Faith. Um, a recent post on there. And it was, it was more about friendship and in the pastoral ministry and, and to that, yeah. that end. But he mentioned some of his experiences on sabbatical of, of continuing to cultivate friendships. And so that, that kind of stuck into my own brain about, as I think about my sabbatical for next summer, yeah, what are, where, what is life giving and what is restorative and, and friendships have to be up there pretty close to the top. And, um, you know, again, if we're being honest and like, I would, I would guess many of us are, uh, we're probably not great at keeping up with friends, particularly if they don't live close to us. And so um, trying to find that time and that opportunity to continue to build into and invest in those relationships, because as, as pastors and people in ministry, uh, you know, again, this is where you want to go, but do I hit the pause on the record button if not, people in my congregation see it, but, but they would know too, that it's just different and it's harder. And so um you know, you can't have that exact same one-for-one relationship with a congregate that you may have with just another friend that's kind of in the trenches, gets it with you and knows that. And so for next summer, as I think about my time away in my sabbatical, I think the continuing and ongoing cultivation of friendships is going to be a pretty big part of that mm-hmm. as well. Something I'm looking forward to. Yeah. If I can ask then, cultivating the friendships you have there in Milwaukee or friendships you've had and wanting to see outside and see them continue. Yeah. Is there a difference? What does that mean? Yeah, for me, I think it would be more outside of the, the realm of Milwaukee. Um, yeah. Certainly have, have been able to, to have some good friends here, although probably even not maybe as many as I would probably want or desire, although there's a number of factors involved with just life and kids and other things that happen. But yeah, maybe more so the friendships that, that were um, – that were developed earlier in life through seminary or other, other avenues of ministry. I, I was able to work with RUF for a number of years and RUF does a great job of bringing the campus ministers together multiple times a year to build that fellowship and that friendship. And for eight years now in, in Milwaukee, when you're a solo pastor, or church planner, that, that gets pulled out from under you. And, and I think you don't necessarily appreciate those things until later. And so I think in some ways a sabbatical can be a, a place to re-engage that where maybe you haven't or I haven't. Mm-hmm. And so that's, a, that's, a, that's a part of that that I'm excited about. Yeah, no, that's good. That's good. You know, I, I would say in my experience, you know, obviously, uh, or not obviously, but it's with so many pastors, I, I had the, you know, four weeks vacation and often two weeks study leave type of thing. And, you know, the cadence, Serving in Wisconsin means one of those weeks will be in the in winter and it will not be going further north. It's not much further north. Uh, with my apologies to our friends in Canada, um, but you know there was always two weeks in the summer um, because I always found I needed one week to decompress and the other week to really be able to breathe. Um, and so that was 
quite normal. But then again, they, we had little kids and vacations were visiting family. And they were wonderful, um, but they're not restful uh, mm-hmm. necessarily. I had, I had two sabbaticals. Uh, the first was really an emergency one. It was after 15 years in the church. We had some a crisis uh, the year before. And in the midst of that, the, uh, the session, we decided to buy a building and move into it, which is a little draining. And so I found, uh, well, none of us were healthy at that point. And uh, I had far too much, uh, I don't know what too much suicide ideation is. I know it's just a little is too much, but it was becoming much more pronounced, let's say. And mm-hmm. I thought this is not good. So I got four months, but it wasn't planned. And in that sense, we had three weeks. We, we you know, did some time in France and Germany and Israel. That was great because I was truly away but the rest of the time was spent in my house. And most of that time was trying to figure out what my next job would be. And it wasn't going to be in ministry. Um, so, you know, not healthy. I came back, was not ready to reenter. One of uh, one of our, our friends, and a, a member that the church has still refers to that season. Uh, I was preaching through Ruth. Um, and so, yeah, don't call me Naomi. Um, and then, um, uh, through Mark uh, going to the cross. And he said, it was the most depressing series of sermons I ever heard. Like, yeah, yeah, because I was just oozing through that process. Um, mm-hmm. God was gracious and came through it, but that was not a, a good way of doing it. It was everything my wife feared a sabbatical would be. Mm-hmm. Um, the second one was great. In, in 2016, we planned, we applied for the Lilly Grant, didn't get it. But that planning gave us a really great scope of what we wanted. And the funding came in in the church. So it was we were able to do what we would like we you know, wanted to do. Um, and I was able to come back and process. And it was it was very healthy in, in that mm-hmm. sense. Um, Chris, yeah. if I if I'll just jump in there, I mean, I was yeah. you talking about uh, a stressful time and your your ministry exudes your stress or your mm-hmm. just your depression if you i mean or your melancholy whatever it may be i i i know that to be the case for me personally this you know stuff in the church especially dealing with human sexuality things things that you are so um people are are all up in arms about and then you're all up in arms in one direction, and then the other group is so reactive in another direction. And, and that's before I went to sabbatical, that's how, sort of how I wanted to react to this thing is just be so reactive in whatever direction it may be. Um, it has been helpful to come back uh, and having a little bit more clarity and not even just mind clarity, but just emotional clarity of, oh, wait a second. All that stuff is not that big of a deal. It's a big deal. Don't hear me saying that, but it's not emotionally that big of a deal. Let's back up. And anyway, I, it has been very helpful to be emotionally not reactive. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, it's it's capacity. You know, you you gain capacity for that, and you, you're not sort of swept this way or that way. You're able to kind of keep your feet on the ground because you have uh, the the rest. And, and, and the and the you know ease within yeah. you know to be able to deal with stuff like yeah. that. That's really well said, Joe. Appreciate that. It, it allows it for that self differentiation to take place. You know, exactly. I, I, I don't have to be anxious. This is important stuff, but it's not the ultimate stuff. No matter how hard it is, yeah. um, because the kingdom will go on after I'm gone. You know, mm-hmm. God's work is not going to cease. If I'm not there, uh, either alive or gone. It's yeah. The case. So, Chris, we have a bunch of, uh, not a bunch, we have four questions yeah. that have come in. And um, one of the questions we wanted to ask the, the panel was to talk about the most important lessons you learned about how to re engage in ministry after extended breaks. And some of these questions really kind of build on that. Um, I'm not sure what would be most helpful, Chris, maybe to read them. Yeah, yeah. Let's, let's start start with uh, the with first one, Tim uh, Sharp's question. There, why don't you read that? And yeah, so this. Tim asks, how can coworkers, session members, etc., help the returning minister to return well? And that return well is in quotes. 
Cause like, I guess, what does that mean exactly right. <laughs> to return? Well, um, mm-hmm. yeah. What are your thoughts? Yeah, one thing that I thought about, I was, yeah, just jumping in was, um, it's a, it's a lesson that I've been learning for a while. And I think uh, we'll take the rest of our lives of ministry to continue to learn, but the idea of what you see Jesus doing throughout the gospels of giving away ministry. And, um, I think that is closely connected to sabbatical. And so it didn't happen as much uh, in kind of my five or so week away last summer, but hoping to already have those conversations in place and getting them in place for next summer for me, but giving it away to elders, deacons, lay leaders, other people, so that obviously ministry can be done in your absence, but that also that will help you, I would assume, on reentry when it's not just handed back over to you kind of full board. Mm-hmm. You know, hey, this was great, but now you take it over. But in that time away, two, three, four months, however long, they've taken ownership. They've become more accustomed to it so that you could hopefully ease back into that. Now, there's probably things like preaching and other things that you'll you'll want to do or need to do and do more regularly. But there'll be things, hopefully, too, that you've watched your people and leaders embrace and go, yeah, that was really great. I'm so glad that I got to do that in your absence. And I'd like to continue that. And maybe that will help you kind of ease into that more. And so that's something that's been in going around in my brain a little bit as I've thought about for our time away, but just in general, right. That ministry is about giving it away and empowering other people to engage in it. So. It, 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 yeah. That reminds me when um, Janet and I were, were younger and my, my folks were going to leave. I have a, a much younger brother and sister. And I remember um, we would come up, we were in South Carolina at the time. We'd come up to Pennsylvania to watch uh, my little sister. who was a teenager, young teen at that time. And, uh, and we were, we were in charge and we had our, our daughter with us. We were parents. We knew what we were doing. Well, the moment my folks came home, it was all of a sudden we're again, we're the 15 year olds, you know, we're the kids. And it, it was just, it was a little jarring. It was just a week, you know, type of, type of thing. And I think that can happen in the church as we step away and we step back in. So this doesn't, quite get to the questions. It's our mindset as we re-engage, realizing they've been running the show and it's it, they haven't burned the place down yet. <laughs> um, my first sabbatical, I had a, a he wasn't ordained yet, but he was the director of family ministries. He was 25, 26. And I remember saying when I, when I left, I said, I feel like I'm giving the keys to my Porsche to my 16 year old um, it, with a little sense of humor, but then being able to come back and recognize he did a great job. You know, he didn't burn the place down. It actually prospered. But then to the, on the flip side of this question, and, and John, you, because you've been doing this and, and uh, John, I don't know if this has been your case in preparing for the sabbatical, you've been engaging people. And so if you don't, if they're not involved in the front end, it's going to be harder at the back. So tell, tell us a little bit about the, the front end of preparation because that can help answer the back end. Yeah. Sure. I, I think there's a couple of things to keep in mind on, on that level, at least from what I've learned, is part of this is being a church planner. I don't know how many people on the panel or have planted churches or are solo pastors. And you, you just know that, you know, there's this tension of always like you're the one guy and, and kind of like that. And you're like, oh, I'm, I'm kind of calling the shots around here. But you also quickly learn, too, that I've, I've got to be able to disseminate and divest and give away ministry if I'm going to make it and stay sane as well. And, and so there's the practical component of, of how are, how are things going to work in your absence, right? Just practically, but also just for the sake of, to Chris's point, right? The kingdom will move on and grow and expand with or without us. Um, and, and, and having your people know that one of the things I've tried to share somewhat regularly with our congregation is, is what will our church look like when I'm gone for good? Right. This is not going to be my church forever. It's our name is Christ Church Milwaukee. And we try to take that seriously, say it's it's Christ Church. So when I'm gone, what that look like. And I think a big part of that is empowering people, as Chris said, on the front end uh, in my absence for that. And, and part of the thing that gets me in some ways excited about the longer term aspect of the ministry of this particular local church is that if that can come out well, I don't know, God only knows what will happen over sabbatical, but if that comes out well, hey, that will be a really great preparation for when I die or when I move or take another call or whatever happens after that season of my time here. And so that's something that's in the back of my mind and I'm trying to share with our, again, elders and deacons and lay leaders as well. 
Um, I think one of the things to, to add to that and the, the challenge is to, to start, this is something I'm not great at, but try to do it early enough. COVID has totally changed how people think about service and volunteering. It's really kind of done a number on our volunteer pool. And so it's caused me in some ways to pivot out as I think about how to equip people, how to try to get them to engage more directly in ministry around them. But um, yeah, so that's something I think also be processing of the next four, five, six months leading up to sabbatical, but mm-hmm. yeah, just trying to get it done on the, on the front side so that when they come out, um, you know, a, a fear, and I've talked about this with our session is that maybe I mentioned earlier that it, it doesn't just get shoved all back in my lap. Um, but that there's enough to go, oh, good, okay, there, I've had a breather, I can catch my breath, I can re-enter, and it won't just all be waiting. You know, it's like the pile of mail when you get home from vacation, you got to sort through everything. It's like, well, what if somebody already threw out all the junk mail for you and just gave you the good stuff that you wanted to see? Uh, that would be great if it happened on the return and re-entry from sabbatical as well. So, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's the answer right there, John, is like the idea that, uh, when you return and you were getting at it too, Chris, like uh, that people just dump all the tasks back on you. And mm-hmm. th- that's the answer that I, I would say to that as well is you, you just don't give me back all these tasks, coworker, congregant, session, whoever it may be. Um, it, just give that, give the sabbatical returnee some time to, to, to take over again, whatever he needs to take over. I, I've told a couple people to quote the movie uh, Office Space. I've just sort of fixed the glitch on some things. Um, I've just sort of decided to quit a few ministries, um, but I haven't told anybody. Um, and I'm just going to wait to see what happens. I'm still sitting in it. I mean, it's I've been back for 24 days and um, there have been a couple ministries where, you know, it's August 24th, September, September is going to be here and fall is going to be here. Uh, there are many tasks that I had been doing every year by this point that I have not done. And I'm just going to wait to see what happens. Um, <laughs> yeah. And we'll just, we'll, yeah. I'll roll with it then. If they're mission critical. One of the yeah, things right. I, I think that way, especially for a session to help the, the, the pastor return well, and it, it, it could seem a little counterintuitive is, but give him a week before he preaches, come to church and just re-enter. Don't, you know, come back from sabbatical. Now I got to, now I got to prepare and preach a sermon um, because the expectation could be, well, you should have been working on that when you're on sabbatical. No. Um, but having, and like what you're saying, Joe, is let's just take a, take a little break. Let me re-enter more, more slowly. I think that, that can be. And, and that's not just for me, as John was saying, that's for the church. That's for the, yeah. um, it's for the good of the, the, the co-ministers and the, the whole congregant. Yeah. Yeah. The, the, I think the, the next of, question was, Oh, I was just going to say yes. that I think Sorry. a number of questions are asking s- similar things. Mm-hmm. So I thought may, rather than reading them all out, uh, maybe to combine some of them, like particularly re-entry routine pace and burnout avoidance to sort of together, you know, how, okay. how, how do you, how do you deal with, and, and Joe, I think, in terms of routine and pace and, and perhaps even, uh, you know, the, the whole burnout piece, which can, is, is often related to pace, you know, do, doing too much, not actually taking a day off, you know, doing things other people should be doing. But yeah, maybe speak to the whole question of, you know, how do you address, you know, reentry routine, new pace, and uh, burnout avoidance? Um, This will be simple. I can't tell you what to do. I can tell you what not to do Um, because I did it terribly. Uh, I did it very terribly, which is I loved my sabbatical. It was wonderful. It was great. And I didn't plan to reenter at all, like at all. I I didn't put a thought into it at all. I was enjoying it. Anytime, even the day before I came back, if someone asked me like, oh, what are you, gonna do? you know, how are you going to, are you ready to go back? You ready to start working? And I was like, no, 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 I'm not thinking about that. I'm not thinking about that because I'm just enjoying it. And gentlemen, that was a 
terrible strategy that I did mm-hmm. because I came in, my sabbatical started, or it, it, my work, I started again August 1, which is a Monday. So I, I was not uh, at church on Sunday. Um, and I had a whole week before a Sunday, which was, uh, which was a good thing for me. Um, but I came in Monday and I got hit by the wall of work and just the amount of things, even, I, I mean, I wasn't taking any tax tasks yet, but um, just hearing all the problems that were still there. And in fact, there were new problems. There were like things that I didn't know about and, oh no, that, that marriage is falling apart or this thing has happened. Ah, I didn't know that, you know, all this stuff just hit me. And I mean, my wife will tell you, I came home from work on Monday and I took Tuesday, I took Tuesday off because I just needed time to just like, I had whiplash. I mean, I'd I'd tell people it was whiplash. I, I, I wrote up here my funny joke of, you know, no shoes, no shirt, no problem. I was like vacation, Michael Scott from the office, come in and with a little dreadlock, steel drums, Hey guys, just calm down. And no, people had been working for months. And in fact, people had been working harder because I wasn't there and no, everyone was kind, no one was resentful, um, but it was hard. It was just hard. So Vincent, I'm not giving you an answer. I'm telling you what don't do. Um, well, well, you are, you are giving an answer. Your answer is don't, don't not have a plan, but have a plan. You're not saying what the plan should be because how could you? I mean, it, it's not a one size fits all. But to, to give it some forethought um, that the on-ramp is just as important as the off-ramp. I mean, you know, I coached some guys pre-sabbatical, during, and post. And I don't know, I think it's about between three and six months of preparation going into that sabbatical, both in both in planning the sabbatical itself, what's, what it's, what's going to happen during it, but offloading everything leading up to it so you can actually pull the plug out. Mm-hmm. So to have nothing on the other side, you know, and it took all that forethought to to get out, you need to also be thinking about getting in. So that's a good word. Yeah, but Warren Harvey uh, makes a comment along this line where he talks about having the off ramp in and out um, uh, with specific objectives and tasks for leaving and returning well, and they're not part of the official sabbatical. So if you get three months, that doesn't mean now three months has just been shortened down to, you know, two and a half, yeah. two months. But yeah, to be able to say, I need to come in and reprocess, reorient. Mm-hmm. Um, and again, it's it's an important thing to, to take place. Otherwise, we, we, we fall in those habits. No, sorry. I, I just was about to interrupt to say something that I think I already said, which is that was the reason why I timed the sabbatical when I did, which... Mm-hmm. Um, I didn't want to come back in September one, especially with, I'm in a, I'm in a church with a large staff. I'm not the only associate pastor. There's, we have multiple pastors. A lot of my job is, is, um, is programming. I mean, it just really is. This is very task oriented. And so I uh, could not, if I, I knew, I knew enough, not smart, but I was smart enough to know if I came in on September one, that would have been a disaster. And so what you're saying, Chris, like I, I needed at least a month probably even more than that to really just sort of have the on-ramp back on. So. What are your thoughts as far as how do you process the sabbatical with the congregation? How much do you share? Um, because, you know, if you say nothing, it can be a little strange because they're going to want to know, you know, again, it's like vacation. Did you have fun? You go, well, it was this and this, but, and how much do you not share? I mean, how, how do you keep that balance? What's the perspective as you re-enter on that level? Yeah, I um, I can answer that. And I I, see, I think this question is, is similar to all this anonymous attend- attendee. What were some useful responses to people who were mad or jealous of your sabbatical? Mm-hmm. I mean, I, I, similar to that, like just dealing with people in the congregation or even just friends who are not in the church, um, I would talk to during sabbatical, um, and uh, people, people were jealous and, and I, I do have to think through, we did some amazing stuff on my sabbatical. My wife and I went to Scotland for two weeks. Um, my whole family went on a cruise and that seems, uh, 
I don't know, uh, gross almost. You know, it seems extravagant, uh, lavish. Um, and I don't want to tell people that too much. And it, it makes people jealous. It tempts people to jealousy. And so I do have to think through how to strategically talk to, talk to folks. I mean, the one thing that I have said over and over again, to, especially anyone in the church, is how thankful I am to the session of our church mm. uh, and to the people of our church to give me time and money to be able to go. Um, and that's true. I'm not, I'm not playing games here. I, that is a true statement. Um, but, I, but, you know, I am aware that uh, some folks are just um, are jealous of the fact that they don't work a job that gives them a sabbatical. And so, you know, one thing that I learned to ask them is, why do you want a sabbatical? Like what, you know, what about your job? Do you, do you want a sabbatical from? And so I, you know, at least with one guy, I was able to talk through with him how he could take a quote unquote sabbatical, even when he does a job that works at one of the big companies in in town that doesn't give sabbaticals to guys. Um, And so we've talked through some of that stuff. So I'm rambling now, but um, that's it. Yeah. I think in terms of uh, sharing, um, I think you can always share the benefits that you gained um, you, you don't have to, you know, tempt people by saying, oh, we got to go see this, or we got to go do that. But you can talk about the benefits that you gained. And, and that can be very beneficial. I think, secondly, you can talk about the lessons that you learned, like what, what are some things, whether professionally or personally, here's some things that, you know, takeaways for me that, that I, I might not have seen otherwise um, that have benefited me. Um, I think people will be satisfied with that um, as opposed to hearing about every, you know, how you spent every day and every weekend. And and that that's who wants that anyway, you know, that that's only going to breed something, something bad. (laughs) You know, as a kid, we always had the neighborhood slideshow when people came back from, from vacation slides, everybody are these little transparencies you would put in projectors. Now it's just on Facebook, you know? And so, it is hard, but yeah, but it is sharing not just so much what you did, but what you received, but some of what you received may not be necessarily always appropriate. Um, mm-hmm. So part of my process in the last sabbatical was to think through what does the rest of my, the next quarter of ministry look like? Yeah. Um, and and the session had the same objective. They wanted to think and pray through and process while I'm gone. What does life look like without Chris? And, you know, whether it's soon or later, as it turned out, it was about a year later. Um, and it, it, and we all knew I was thinking through what am I going to transition out of out of a parish context into what I'm what I'm doing now. And that that was the session knew that congregation didn't. Um, you know, that's why I was doing it. But but, but was concentrating on do I want to train train younger guys for, for ministry? And that, mm-hmm. that's what came out of it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you certainly, if you're processing your all your negative emotions towards your session or certain members in the church, you can't say, yeah, I came to peace with the fact that you're all jerks. You know, that that type of sharing is is never, never appropriate. Because then you'll hear what they process while you're gone. We really had good preaching for the first time in months, you know, that type of thing. Um, I'm just going to add real quick, I, I think that part of the struggle of just pastoral ministry more broadly is, is that we as pastors lead, uh, lead and live these lives that are much more out in the open than our typical congregants do. I mean, people know what we make. People know our salary. I mean, that, that, you know, your yearly budget for the church is going to reveal a lot of things that just is not going to happen with other people in the congregation. And I think on some level, what you do on the sabbatical ties into that. I mean, I'm, Chris mentioned applying for the Lilly grant and other people on here may have done that in the past or are, are planning on it. And a big part of that is congregational involvement. And if you've got a, a, a plan or an idea that, that, you know, is going to be life-giving to you, which it should be other people to Joe's point, others point may look at that and go, you're doing what? And they're going to pay for you to do that. And, and, and it's, it's going to be one of those things where there's a sense in which you kind of maybe have to just, be okay with that on some level. And yet to what Chris and Vince and others have already said, 
there's a wisdom component of, of what you'll share and what you want. And, you know, um, you know, I heard once before uh, a speaker, maybe it was a Ted talk somewhere saying about, you know, going out and going away and vacating a place in, in terms of just larger spirituality, whether it's Eastern or Christian or Jewish or whatever is something, you know, you come back and the, and the people will ask, what did you see in the wilderness? What did you experience in the desert? And, yeah. you know, even Jesus, right, does that and comes back and he imparts what he saw and learned. Paul did the same in Arabia, but I don't think we can anticipate that that they shared everything that they experienced or did or heard. And so I think there's that wisdom component of, okay, what's good to share? What's what's oversharing, as my wife calls it, you know, um, and trying to tr- strike a balance maybe in that. And sometimes transformational events are not easily to put into words. And so when they ask, you can right. go, it was fantastic. And I'm getting some clarity, but I, I don't really know. I mean, like I said, we, we spent a week with, with some, uh, some friends in, in Israel. They worked for the state department and they took us around. It was great. Janet was so looking forward to it. She, this is going to transform my understanding of scripture. It didn't, <laughs> you know, she said, it's just all built up. You're, you know, where, where Jesus walked is, you know, 10 meters under the ground, you know, I, I you know, it just wasn't all that much for her. And then she felt like a, a spiritual, you know, um, you know, not spiritual that she couldn't get some sense. And so when she came back, people asked her that question. She said, it was fine. It was good. It was neat. Yeah. Uh, is it, 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 so, yeah. So not everything's always transformational. Some of the things that are, we can't articulate. Yeah. One, one I, I would say I've been back for 24 days and I maybe have shared uh, my amazing transfor- transformational sabbatical story with two people. Um, and most of the time, uh, it's mm. just been, it's been amazing. So restful. Thank you. I mean, anyway. Yeah. Mm. I, I did. And I don't know, this came from a suggestion from the Lilly Foundation or heard it from other pastors before, but, and, and maybe again, if you're in a, a solo context, um, just, just having a, a, a night or a time the designated to go, Hey, you know, John's going to kind of, revisit some of the highlights and come in here and, and hear what he hear some of the things he got to experience and, and will share. And um, it, it sounds maybe even selfish on some of it, that way you're kind of condensing it down. So you don't have to have 15 conversations where you're retelling mm-hmm. again over, and over again. Hey, it's the, it's the one time come on this Sunday night, we'll share what happened. And, and that way you can maybe even be more intentional about what you share or don't share. And so yeah. uh, that's something that I think I'm, I'm trying to think through planning about on the re-entry side when that happens. So you're mentioning the, the Lily. I just put the link in there for the clergy renewal um, grants. Now, how, how how long ago did you begin that process for Lily? Yeah, that's a great question. It's It, it caught me off guard the first time around because um, the, I missed the deadline and uh, they do it pretty far in advance. And so the deadline to apply for the, because they do it per calendar year. So if you want to take, for instance, a sabbatical in 2024, they're going to measure that by January to December of 2024. And so you have to have an application in by April, at least for this year, or by April of 23. Mm-hmm. And so I, I was thinking about it two or three years ago, but I had missed the deadline because I, I wasn't, prepared for them to have it that far out in advance. And so the deadline for anything in 2023 was April of um, 2022. And so um, that's just something to be aware of in terms of the application process. And it's, it's good. It's helpful. I mean, so many other people had shared the same thing. I think Chris, you shared this with me even way back early on thinking about it was, even on, even if you don't get it, it's worth applying for because it will yeah. just help you form what you would like to do during your time away. And so yeah. I've been thankful for that, regardless of whether I can get it or not. So if you have to involve the congregation in it. You have, you have a committee of representatives across it. It's not just you and your favorite elder writing up a proposal and delivering it. Uh, yeah. It is across the board, and which is healthy. That's mm-hmm. part of the healthy process. Mm-hmm. But part of that too is, and and kind of getting, we're talking about re-entry, but entry into a sabbatical is getting some outside help too. Um, you, you got some some counsel, coaching, 
what have you. I know, and, and Vince, I want you to talk to the whole part of, of just coaching into a sabbatical as well. Yeah, sure. Um, thanks, Chris. I got significant coaching um, before and during my own sabbatical, which uh, was uh, really life altering in a sense, because now, now I am a coach. <laughs> um, but I was like, wow, where, where has this been all of my career, you know, as a pastor? Um, so I got training and so on. But and now I do coach guys before, during, and after sabbaticals, as well as in other things. And I just think that objectivity, uh, as well as the skill of a listener and a person who's going to ask tough questions, good questions, tough questions, that has no stake in the game. You know, um, they, they, like my coach didn't care whether I stayed or left or what, you know, she was more interested in me being the man of God that I've, I'm called to be, period, you know, mm -hmm. so it's, it's much broader. <clears throat> and I think it gave perspective and time to really reflect on what, 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 what was that? What did that mean? Mm -hmm. um, I, I, you know, I'm, I'm a little bit having trouble explaining it because, like you said before, a transformational experience is sometimes hard to explain. But I think coaching has the ability in the hands of, of, you know, a trained person to really draw that out and to make it that much more effective and meaningful. And I think even, even to the question of burnout, uh, there's, there was a few questions about burnout. How do you avoid it? You know, that kind of thing. I think th if you've had a break, whether a vacation or a sabbatical, or maybe you had a day off where you just gained some clarity, taking those insights and applying them, you know, what, what's brought, what brought me to the edge of burnout mm -hmm. now work your way back and begin to set a new pattern, a new routine, be honest with yourself about that yeah. and then try to apply it practically. And a, you know, a good coach, a good outside friend can, can help you to process that. Now, the mere fact of the benefit of the sabbatical is if we could do it all within our head, we probably wouldn't, we may not need a sabbatical. I don't know if I really agree with that or not, but the fact that we're needing to enter this period means we need some outside voices. And that outside voices are not necessarily the outside voices in our immediate circle, our spouse, our immediate friends, our session. They have good input and we want to take that, but having someone who is, you know, a coach for that process. Yeah. Yeah. Joe, Joe Creech had said he got the little grant last year and he said um, he put in at least a hundred hours of work on it. Wow. That kind of gives you a perspective of, you know, if you want the, if you, you know, again, and he does say too, even if you don't get it, it's worth it. And it is, I didn't get it. It made all the difference. What I planned, I didn't do. Um, but it gave, it gave me the framework of, of how to do it and it involved the congregation. So mm -hmm. good. Well, great. Yeah. Any other frameworks for, for sabbatical um, that you can think of? Any other helps through that process as we begin to wind down? I, I would just concur with everything everyone is saying and agree that it depends on your personality. I'm a task guy. That's how I operate in my life. And I feel like that's probably the way a lot of pastors, church planters are and Mm -hmm. I would say that emphasis on rest. I never went through the Lilly Foundation. Uh, the, I, don't, I didn't get the benefits of that. So I don't know. I can't speak to that. I can only say that um, I didn't live by my to-do list or mm. sabbatical. And uh, it changed the way I engaged in the means of grace. It changed, it, it was, it changed the way I had my devotions. It changed the way I interacted with my family. Um, and it was such a blessing that it has now even changed my devotions subsequently um, and how I engage with my family and my work uh, subsequently. So um, rest is a beautiful, beautiful thing. Yeah. Well, one of the uh, things you can uh, look at, and they're moving more and more into the help here, um, and here's the link, you said, here's the link, uh, is uh, Geneva Benefits, um, what was RBI. Um, our, our retired benefits is now Geneva benefits. And here's a link for their well-being services. If you haven't seen the little booklet, I moved it. 
um, a little orange booklet. You can go online and get it for free. And it, it, some great things talking, you know, some of the studies they did, but sabbatical is uh, discussed there. And really in the midst of beginning to, for them, uh, beginning to think what benefits can they provide? And and so be be looking for some things from uh, Geneva in, in the coming year that, that will touch on those, those aspects, which I think will be really helpful. Um, and there are another, and all this stuff will also be sent out. Um, everybody that signs up, um, I send some notes afterwards. Um, and I don't know if they're still in business, but the Alban Institute um, has some good material. It's very broad Christian um, material, but they have some really great thoughts. Um, this this one is just an article where uh, titled "Not Sure I Want to Be Back." Thoughts on returning from sabbatical. Mm -hmm. um, so this is some honest appraisals from 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 this one writer and, and his content. And I'll just I'll just throw my hat in the ring and just a t in terms of a couple of tips maybe for reentry. Mm -hmm. um, one would be vulnerability. Um, share the lessons you've learned. You know, with with discretion. You know. Um, be open and honest, you know, with your session in your church. I think that's a, that's really important. You don't want to be, um, hiding or pretending or something, just be, be yourself and share vulnerably. I think number two would be expectations, you know, be patient with yourself, be patient with the process, you know, re-entry, finding your way. It's not like, okay, now I'm back to work. I should be fully up to speed. I should be totally, you know, running the marathon, you know, mm -hmm. at that same pace. No, no, no. So accept your humanity, uh, you know, work through your feelings and stuff uh, and, and challenges. And then the last one would be support. Don't be afraid to ask for help, um, you know, whether it's a, a, a professional coach like myself or someone, just someone outside who can keep your confidence, who you can feel safe with and you can talk freely with. Well, there's a question here, uh, Vinny. Where can you find a sabbatical coach? What do you think about that, Vincent? <laughs> well, I'm happy to, uh, I mentioned to Chris, I'm happy to offer anyone who's interested a, a free 30-minute coaching session to talk about, uh, you know, the benefits of coaching. Not really might be helpful to you. Uh, I think Chris just put the link in there. So feel yeah. free um, uh, to, to use that if you'd like. Uh, obviously, I'm not the only game in town. So, uh, you know, uh, poke around, ask around. Um, but yeah, the, the, there's, there's some good coaches out there to help you. Yeah, no. yeah, there are. And, and I just, again, encourage you and ask other guys, uh, who have been going on sabbatical. Um, I can pretty much, uh, guarantee you, um, I, I think if I'm joking here, a third of our, uh, teaching elders have been on sabbatical in the last six months. Um, and I think a third last year, uh, because as Joe had mentioned, it has been a hard time. And so I'm glad people are, are, are making use of that, that opportunity. But so that was setting up for this, this, this webinar. I kept, I go, okay, I know somebody, they're on sabbatical. Oh, they don't get back until yesterday. And I was like, no, I'm not asking somebody for the reasons, Joe, all, you also mentioned is re-entry. That's not the time to have them to start processing. So uh, it's, uh, they're, they're out there and just, I, one of the best things I think you can do to begin the process is asking around uh, others you know in your presbytery or old seminary friends that have been on 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 sabbatical. Um, it's a it's a great opportunity. It, it really is. Yeah, um, Warren Harvey mentioned Matt Bowling with Flores Coaching um, as another coaching uh, opportunity as well. So well, good. Well, thank you, everyone. Appreciate. Uh, Appreciate your, your time. Uh, we will be back. It'll be end of next month because I'm going on vacation. And so I'm, I'm not doing a webinar while I'm away with my wife for our 40th anniversary. So that would be a bad thing. Um, Good job. I probably Good job. share all that much about what we're doing, although there could be something on Facebook. Um, and uh, But in that process, we will be returning. Actually, we'll be talking with Matt Bowling talking about interim pastors and a number of people that have served in that, in that context. And it's a, a kind of a concept of that, uh, 
we, we don't talk about a whole lot in our in the PCA, but is is really really helpful. Um, and yes, um, if if you're watching, this has been recorded, and you'll be getting a link to the YouTube place. Share it, and I'll send you some notes. And I always share the email addresses of of our panel. Um, I didn't don't think I told them ahead of time, but now it's too late. So they'll just uh, be able to to uh, to answer any of your questions as well. So again, thank you. And appreciate this opportunity to be with you today. God bless.